Hello, this is Bern, and on today's video, I'm going to reveal what makes a man devote himself to you and only you. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, and heart centered women how you can attract the man you want and the relationship you crave without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques. Now, if you clicked on this video, my hypothesis is you're seeking something more. You want a level of connection that goes beyond a boyfriend, uh, beyond a partner. You want someone who can be your best friend, who can be your lover, who can be your companion, who can be your cheerleader, who can get you, understand you, play with you. And devotion itself, the word, encompasses more than love. There's an element of love and devotion, but there's an element of deep, loyalty, there's an element of commitment, there's an element of heart-centered radiance, there's an element of worship. And it's not something that men and women do in a weird, codependent way. It's the worshiping of the highest part in me, worshiping the highest part in you. And if you're seeking the type of relationship, you're in the right place because that's what I'm going to cover on this video. Before I get fully started, let me just share that if you want to understand how you can attract commitment-minded men beyond the intellectual understanding of it, step into the process of it. Uh, the first link on the description of this video will allow you to go through my masterclass. It goes more in depth than I can on this short video. So all you have to do is click on the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email and you can start watching that free masterclass right away and it's free. So what is the first definition that allows you to create, inspire this level of commitment and so on. Well, the understanding that there's two sides to this, right? The last thing I want to do is give you the false impression that it's all on you. I also don't want you to think that it's all on the guy. So let me start with the man first, because there's guys who are able to commit to this level of commitment and this level of devotion. There's guys who are craving that. There's guys who don't want to go that route or who can't do that. Now, the important piece for you right now is not for you to think, well, no guy can do this. It's not true. Many guys can do it. Some guys can do it, but they can do it with you, which is what the second part of this video will be about. So first, what type of guy can do this? I'm going to give you three important, crucial characteristics for a type of man who can be devoted to you. The first one is going to be clarity of purpose. So what does that mean? Does he know what he came here to do? And here I mean earth. Does he have a yearning to express a song that's his? And it doesn't have to be in any specific form. Whatever he came to give, to discover, to express, is he on the path of doing that? Why is that so important? It's incredibly important because if he hasn't found what that is, and that's something so crucial for a man to figure out, he's not going to be able to devote himself to you in the same way because you become a distraction to his purpose rather than something that can help him and you along your purpose. So very important for you to connect with men and figure out who among the guys that you're connecting with knows what he wants to do, is stepping into it, taking action in a way where he won't die with his song inside of him. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you want a guy who has the capacity to be self-validated for the most part. We all like praise. We all like love from the outside. But if you have a guy who fundamentally needs that constantly, from an outside source besides him, that's going to make it less likely to devote himself to you because when he feels like he doesn't have it from you, he's gonna look for it in somebody else's eyes or arms or body or emotional connection. So for a guy to be more loyal and devote himself to you, he needs to be secure in himself to the point where he doesn't need the validation of thousands of women to know that he's worthy. It's cool if he has it, but he doesn't need it to be and stand on his own. And the third one is you want to connect with a guy who understands the difference between happiness and pleasure and that the path to happiness is not pleasure but responsibility and meaning. Responsibility, taking on the burden of somebody else's experience, uh, doing more for others than just for yourself. That type of stuff, which is some, what you need to create a family, to give yourself, to help someone, to love someone, you need to be more selfless and selfish. 
If you have a guy who understands that there's a delayed gratification process that takes place, that's the type of guy you want. A guy who has discipline and a guy who understands that happiness is created through work, not through just blissing out and having pleasure. Okay, so that's the type of guy who can step into this. And there's many guys who have the capacity to do it, but may not be doing that with you. They may be choosing somebody else for that. So while I'm asking you to avoid guys who don't have the capacity to commit at that level to create devotion for you, there's a gray area there of guys who, who can do this, but may not be noticing you or may not be getting what they need from you to do it. So what's the first thing he's gonna need from you in order to devote himself to you? He's going to need, and this is, if you heard nothing else but this, this would be worth you watching this video. He's going to need your self-love and self-worth to be high. Why is that? Because he's only going to be able to consistently and sustainably love you the way you love yourself and the way you appreciate yourself. Now, why, I mean, let me repeat this. <laughs> if you don't love yourself in action, if you don't value yourself in action, he's not going to value you more than you value yourself. Now, there's this fine balance between valuing yourself a lot, right, the right place, and then being condescending with other human beings. I'm not talking about being cocky, I'm not talking about feeling that you're more than somebody else. I'm talking about you understanding the incredible uniqueness that you provide, that you possess, and that you're able to bring that to the table in the relationship. So when push comes to shove, and he might be disrespectful at times, or he might, be he might misunderstand you, that he gets a clear sense that you own yourself, and that he needs to step up versus step down in order to continue. Why is this important? Because if he finds that you are valuable, he, by definition, is more valuable to be able to conquer your heart. If he conquers someone who doesn't value herself, then any idiot could have done that. So that puts him, in a selfish way, in a lower position. All of this happens subconsciously. Nobody's thinking, well, she doesn't value herself, therefore I'm less valuable. But if he knows that you're high worth and high value and that you love yourself, and he happens to do what it takes to earn your heart, then he feels uplifted because he did something that was more challenging which is something that guys enjoy. Guys enjoy a challenge that's healthy. Now I'm gonna give you a few specifics that make it more possible for him to devote himself to you versus somebody else. The first one is admiration. A guy will not devote himself to you if he doesn't feel admiration from you. As much as he can be self-assured and as much as he can be self-validating, he wants the woman that he's giving his life to, that he's, he wants to be your hero, that point blank. And you can't, fake admiration. So that's why it's so important for you to connect with a man that you feel inspired by, because if you don't feel inspired by him, you will reflect through your voice, through your actions, through your sex, through your being, through what you say and what you don't say, that you don't look up to him in any way. And if you don't look up to him in any way, he's gonna find someone who may not be as smart, as beautiful, as accomplished as you, but smiles at him and winks at him and laughs at his jokes, and he's gonna confuse that with admiration, and he's gonna go to that because he's not feeling it from you. So first, connect with the guy that you can admire. Second, have the capacity and the vulnerability to express admiration when you see it so that he knows that you know him and that he knows that you get him. So that's crucial. Number two, expressiveness. There's so many women who have a, an abundance of love and expressiveness and passion in their hearts, but are so guarded that they're pushing that down consistently. And when they get a chance to connect with a man, they give him one-tenth of what they're capable of giving. I'm not talking about you offering yourself and being an open book with someone you don't know, but when you get to know someone and you're still holding back because of fear of getting hurt, then the expressiveness in you that will create the visceral punch in the stomach that he needs to not consciously but subconsciously do whatever it takes to devote himself to you won't happen. It will be more of like a friendship, uh, companionship, without that level of viscerality that's required for him to go beyond commitment, beyond friendly love, into a devotional type of love that lasts for years and years. So expressiveness is the second thing. Uh, third key for you to create, inspire this you and only you <laughs> devotion from him is going to be vulnerability. Now, this is related to, exp to expressiveness in some way, but it really at the heart of it is, do you know your own needs? Are you aware of your needs? And if you're aware of your needs, do you have the courage to express them to him? Why? Because he might reject your needs. He might say, this is weird, you're weird, I don't like this. But he might also say, 
I get you, I understand you, and I can do things differently, or I can vary my approach in, in a way that can meet you. Because if you don't express what you really need, and you're hoping that he reads it in your mind, and you're one of those human beings, and it's normal because many people subconsciously feel this way, that it's so romantic when he reads your mind, then he's not gonna meet your needs, you're not gonna feel it, you're not gonna express more, it's a bad cycle to be on. So vulnerability means you have the capacity to understand your needs first and foremost, then express them to him in a way where he gets them and then can change his behavior, his approach, his stance, his way of loving you as a result of that, and you can feel more met and seen, understood and witnessed, and he can feel more useful into your life. Vulnerability, without vulnerability, he doesn't feel like he can add that value into your life, and if he doesn't feel he can add that value into your life, trust me, he will find someone who he feels he can add that value to and that's who he'll devote himself to. Number four, range. Range, my dear, because sometimes people tend to go into one of two, I mean, they're super relaxed and just chill, nothing serious or just all seriousness. Now, what I'm talking about right now is having the capacity to have deep, profound conversations and experiences and playful, silly, laughable experiences as well. So when you incorporate playfulness with depth, that's something that's a punch cocktail that is really hard for him to find somewhere else. There's going to be women who are all fun and giggles. There's going to be women who are all seriousness and business. And there's women who have the capacity to go on both. And then he never knows what hits him. There's a type of mystery that you're not trying to be mysterious, but it's, it's, like it's, it's variety, it's excitement, it's range. So when you have the capacity for range, and that range includes playfulness combined with depth, that is something that is so scarce and so hard to find that the likelihood that he commits himself to you and devotes himself when you have that is really high. Number five is respect. Now, I can't emphasize this enough because just like you want to be seen and heard, that's a need that you have, he has that need for respect. And each man has a different definition for respect. Some have a healthy definition, some have a healthy definition. So but you're a healthy guy, you want to figure out what he finds respectful. Some, sometimes it has to do with loyalty. Sometimes it has to do with conversation or mode of communication. Sometimes it has to do with how you ask things or how you share things with them. Sometimes it has to do with your conversations of him with other human beings. So once you figure out how he, his need for respect is met, then having the capacity to meet it is important because some guys don't have the language to express to you you're being disrespectful. They'll just get upset and they'll hold on to it, hold on to it, hold on to it, and one day they'll explode and say, I'm out. So, important for you to figure out what is respect for your man. And when you find that out, then if it fits with the way you are, then do what you can to meet him there so that he can continue loving you in a way that goes beyond the norm, beyond the convention, beyond the, what most people have. And by the way, let me make this clear. Most human beings do not have the relationship that I'm speaking about right now, which is why it's so important that if you want this, you're willing to do something different than most people do. The last one that I'll share with you right now is sensuality. And I left this last because most human beings think that that's where it starts, with the viscerality of sex and the uh, sexual expression or connection from the physical realm. That is not the first thing he needs to connect with you, but he needs that to, con to commit to you at that level. Why? Because there's an element of deep intimacy and deep expression and deep desire and deep feeling of fulfillment and flow and openness that he gets when he has that level of viscerality and connection with you. When you understand him and he understands you sexually and physically and emotionally in the tactile way, in the way you look at him, in the way you play with him sensually, all those are what separates this from a really good friendship that veers into roommateship, into an incredible companionship and friendship that goes into a lover type of situation that extends into devotional love. So it's important for you to figure out two things on the sensuality aspect. Number one, what makes you tick and thrive and expand and feel like things are great. So you can A, express that within yourself and B, ask it of him in a way that he understands. And B, what is his language like? What t turns him on? What makes him light up and what doesn't? so that you can connect with him more and more in a way that creates that level of intimacy and connection that by itself will not create devotion, but combined with all the other stuff I shared with you can create the deepest level of devotion that lasts a lifetime. Last thing I'll share is that you need to make this a daily commitment. You can create this with someone. If you forget, the devotion will no longer be there. This is a daily commitment from both of you. 
Now, if you find that this is helpful, and you really want to go deeper than just understanding this into the how do you take action, how do you step into this in your life, how do you create this like level of attraction with a man, then I invite you to click on the first link in the description of this video to watch my free training and click there, enter your name and email, and you can watch this masterclass that will show you how to go beyond the intellectual understanding and into the embodiment of it. If you like this video, please click, please click like or thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. By hitting the little bell, you'll be notified of new episodes. And last but not least, if you're watching my video right now, this resonates with you and your heart, and you've been watching videos, you've been doing some other form of coaching or therapy, and nothing's working at the level that you feel you deserve. There might be an incredible benefit in you working with me to help you get there in a fraction of the time. And if that's you, you can, second link in the description of this video, apply to connect with me if we're a fit. We'll connect and I'll share with you how I might be able to help you get where you wanna go. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for wanting more out of your love life. Thank you so much for allowing me into your phone, into your life. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.